Hey everybody, it's Charlie from Daily Motor, and today we've got the infotainment demo on the 2023 Honda CRV and its Honda infotainment system. In this test, we're going to take a look at how the gauge cluster works, how the infotainment works, take a look at Apple CarPlay and Android Auto, and then we're going to head out, uh, actually no, we're not going to head out on the road because that's not what we do in this test. <laughs> Let's hop on and take a look at it. Ah, the CRV, this one being the Sport Touring, aka Hybrid model. I've been looking forward to spending time with this for quite some time now, and I have enjoyed my week with it so far. If you do want to see more on the CRV, check the links in the description. We've got a fuel economy test that I ran last night. Also recorded a sound test, a members only sound test. We're going to shoot a review after this. So I'll throw the links to all those in the description. Starting up front here with the steering wheel, you can see we've got volume and track controls on the left, some controls for the front left screen up there here, and then cruise control on the right with a big heated steering wheel button smack dab in the middle lower. Looking up at these gauges, you see the right one is a real gauge. That actually shows your speed with a sweeping needle, but the left and the center are both screens. The center pretty much stays like that. There's no customization. You can just turn the cruise on and off essentially. But the left side, you use this home button and the scroller knob to go through your various screens. You can see your power flow, so if energy is going from the battery or from the engine or back, really. Your range and fuel economy, speed and time, average speed there and how long you've been driving. Audio, phone, you can make calls, call your favorites or things like that. Navigation, if you have navigation going either in Apple CarPlay or Android Auto or the native nav, then your directions are going to come up there. If you don't have any destination set, you just get a compass. Driver attention, it's going to let you know if you should be taking a break. Torque distribution for your all-wheel drive system, whether all five seatbelts are engaged or not. Whether your car needs maintenance, it looks like we've got 40% left on the oil life in this one. Safety support systems, make sure those are all working properly. If you want it to be a little bit simpler, you can just simply turn that off and just have a nice simple screen. You kind of get a power meter around it. This is also how you adjust your brightness, not only for this screen here, but for the center screen as well. So use that to scroll up and down, make brightness adjustments. And here you've got some settings for your gauge cluster. You can actually go through and toggle on or off which screens you want enabled. Some of them are mandatory, it looks like, but others you can remove. Any warnings if your car had maybe a low tire pressure, something like that. And that's it for your center gauge cluster. Moving into the center screen here, this is your home menu. I like the way that these newer Honda screens work. It's very straightforward. You essentially got these tiles here and you can click this one and get all of your applications in a not as visually attractive list. But then you can also scroll through on the right here. It's decently responsive. You can see it responding to my finger there. Before we get into the tiles, let's take a look at the top of the screen. You can go directly to different audio sources by clicking audio source. You can see your AM, FM, Sirius XM, satellite radio, USB-A, Bluetooth, and Android Auto or Apple CarPlay. If you click the top center, you get directly to whatever music is playing on whatever source. Then clicking up here will get you system status for essentially whatever you see up there. So your signal strength for your phone, which devices are connected, etc. And then top right is going to get you your clock. If you press it, you get this nice big analog clock display and then under settings, you get directly to an adjustability for your date and time, including time zone, automatic time adjustments, etc. And you can also choose some different clock faces here, so that's kind of fun. Let's go, ooh, this one, this one looks nice right there. Yeah. Mm. Going back home, then you see the bottom, you have what's called smart shortcuts. So right now you've got navigation, phone, FM radio, Bluetooth audio, then over here you see this smart shortcut screen. If you click that, it'll actually learn things that you press regularly, maybe stations you listen to or phone calls you make that'll learn as you use, or you can just hot swap these out. So if I never use FM radio, I could hold that and say, hmm, actually I'd like a hot swap to Android Auto right there. And then look at that, FM is gone and Android Auto is in its place. It's nice having that custom customability there. Under display mode in this top right, you can also adjust the brightness or simply turn the display all the way off. All right, let's go through your tiles a little bit here. Let's skip all apps for now. Taking a look at navigation. This is not a full Google Maps nav by any means, but it works pretty well. You can customize whether you want 
screen to be kind of uh, angled right there, sort of a 3D look, north facing up, so it's more just like a traditional map, or a 2D, but with direction facing up. And you can move around, a little bit, a uh, little bit laggy there, a little bit of, can we do pinch and zoom? Yep, pinch and zoom action. The screen gets quite hot though, so when you gotta touch it for a while, then it's a little hot on your fingers. Under phone, straightforward, you get a dialer, your favorite contacts right there, recent calls, you can make those right from there. FM radio, HD radio supported, of course. Bluetooth audio, if you were Bluetooth audio streaming, that's where you'd be able to do that. We'll do Android Auto and Apple CarPlay in a moment. You can view your full power flow right here and some statistics. So you can see I've only gotten 17.3 MPG for this current drive, because I pretty much just came up this hill and blasted the air conditioning. Total range as well. Series XM, let's take a quick look at that. Yep, yep, okay. So you got your favorites down there and you can go through different categories, play, pause, etc. Skip general settings for now. Trip computer, that's going to show you your average fuel economy for both the current drive, trip A and trip B, as well as your previous resets. USB A, if you wanted to play music through there, that's what that's going to look like. You can browse through your tracks. You can see I've got this on here for the sound system test right now. AM radio system updates tab. So if you're connected to Wi Fi, then you could actually update the system over the air. Wi Fi hotspot, you can get Wi Fi hotspot through ATT and actually have wireless for people in the vehicle if you were to pay for it. There's your clock screen again. Honda Link, so this is how you're going to be connected for if you had any sort of emergency or needed to get in touch with a dealer or something like that and figure out something to do with your car. And then your smart shortcuts, we took a look at that a moment ago, and same with display mode. Let's get into settings. Got your date and time, different languages, support for English, Espanol, and Francais. And that's interesting, you can actually do different languages for both the gauge cluster and the center display. It's kind of funny. Touch panel sensitivity. I have this set to high, but you can have normal as well. System volumes, if you don't want it barking directions at you quite so loud, you can adjust that. Data sharing, if you don't want them to be able to share any data about you or your whereabouts, you'd want to have that off. Factory data reset, if you go to sell the car, you should do that. Clear all your information off there. Smartphone connection, that's where you're going to see for your Apple CarPlay and Android Auto getting paired up. Again, your connections via both Wi-Fi and Bluetooth. Display settings, what do we got here? Brightness, contrast. Okay, actually like a little bit of contrast there. Black level, interesting. And that's it, we already have our brightness all the way up. Sound settings, you got bass, mid-range, and treble. If you want to see more on that, check the link in the description for the sound system test. Camera. No 360 camera available here in the new CRV. I know a lot of people are disappointed about that, but we at least get a backup camera because it is the law here in the U.S. You can change whether the guides move with your steering wheel. Also, keep your cross-traffic monitor on. I think that's important. Voice control. Voice control mode, either normal or uh, assist mode. Let's keep normal on and let's give that a try. I don't think we have any sort of wake word. Hey, Honda. Nope. Oh. Navigate to Starbucks. Searching for Starbucks. Select a line number. One. Starbucks. Would you like to start navigation? Yes. All right, so not quite as quick After and intuitive. Seven hundred feet, okay. turn Calm right yourself. and then turn left. Not quite as intuitive and quick as the Accord system, but still pretty darn good. All right, let's cancel that and take a look at Android Auto. We've got our S twenty three Ultra connected right now, wirelessly because we have support for wired and wireless Apple CarPlay and Android Auto. This is your home screen. I've got big Google Map going on here, and then my YouTube Music. Good play music directly from there then it would get going play on the right you could also click and bring up my Google Maps full screen navigate around there 
pinch and zoom, etc. Going back home, there is your dialer. And there's your app list right there. Let's see how well Google Assistant works. Navigate to McDonald's. Okay, there's a McDonald's 1.1 miles away. Navigate to that one? Yeah. Okay, McDonald's 1.1 miles away. And there we go. All right, let's get Apple CarPlay hooked up. I am greeted with Apple CarPlay and then saying, Charlie's S23 Ultra is using, being used for Android Auto. Would you like to disconnect it and connect the new device? Yes, I would. And there we have it. Apple CarPlay coming up large and nice on the screen. There's what your home screen's gonna look like as we get Google Maps running. Large resolution, that's the one thing I don't care for with these newer Honda systems. Things like the Accord look fantastic because it's a very high definition and resolution. Things are much smaller and crisper looking. This is a larger, chunkier looking display and, and just doesn't look as modern as it does in the Accord. And also, it does seem like my phone's in a little bit of trouble doing the camera and the CarPlay getting going here. So I don't think it's the car's fault that we're getting a little bit of lag. But let's hop in, take a look at Google Maps. Here's your Google Maps display. Again, can move around when your phone's not overheating and pinch and zoom, etc. There's your dialer and your favorites. And let's take a quick look at YouTube Music. Play the super mix. See the now playing screen come up. Really struggling today. There we are. And to get back to your main Honda screen, all you gotta do is press home right there. I love having physical buttons for volume, track, and home and back. So there it is, the Honda infotainment navigation display here in the CRV Sport Touring. Hope you all like what you saw. If you have any extra questions, let me know in the comments. I'll try to get to them, and we'll see you on the next one. I'm Charlie from Daily Motor, and as always, drive on. Mm -hmm.